Hey guys, it's Dave for Gamers on Games. This is going to be just a general vlog episode. Um, so, first of all, I've been debating whether or not to actually do this. And um, I, if I'm recording this now, obviously I've settled on yes. So, I'm ultimately hoping this is going to be the last political <laughs> um, episode that I ever do um, on the channel. And... Um, because I've done it for my own catharsis and my own venting. Um, I'm, I'm hoping again, this is the, the last one I do. Um, so today was inauguration day of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, I'm, by the way, I'm just gonna put this out there. I'm also recording this because um, I'm hoping, suspecting, my daughter will eventually see this and um, it's one of those things of like, I'd like her to know what the heck my thoughts were. So, okay, getting on. Um, so it's inauguration night, day. Actually, technically, I guess it's the next day. So anyway, uh, <laughs> the inauguration has happened. Um, uh, Trump is out, Biden is in. Um, my thoughts, honestly, while I was watching it, I was very emotional, very teary-eyed. And I think it's a case of it was just relief. Um, I have not hidden my points of view, my politics, or um, my leanings. And to be frank, it's a case of I have very strongly been concerned about the safety of myself and my family and my extended family. Um, the way that he acted, the things that he preached, and the hate hate and the violence and I was genuinely concerned um, for family safety in fact one of the things that actually kept ringing in my ears over the past four years because remember right after he got in there were attacks on synagogues and um, their Jewish graves and stuff like that um, swastikas everywhere it was a lot of immediate hate um, one of the things that rang in my ears was my mother um, saying that she took certain precautions uh, when she had me um, that basically were a case of God forbid Nazis take over the country and I had that in the back of my head the entire time for four years I've had that steadily in the back of my head and I was thinking oh my god you know because growing up you're, you hear that and you're like that's insane. You know, they're, they're gone. They're, they're, the Nazis were defeated in World War II. They're, they're, they don't exist anymore. It's not a thing. It's not something we should have to worry about, especially in this country. But four years has, has proven otherwise. Um, I, things that I knew existed and I always thought were under the surface and, you know, sporadic. We, we saw how bad it could be. I did a previous episode talking about um, my thoughts and reactions to um, the attack in, uh, in the attack on uh, on the Capitol building. But now that he's gone, um, there's there's relief. Now the funny thing is is that uh, I actually had trepidation during the uh, the actual inauguration. Because uh, Trump being Trump and him being the showman he is, I was expecting I was expecting a cliffhanger. I was expecting a twist. I was expecting a something. And one of the things I was expecting was I was expecting round two of of the sixth. And I was surprised, relieved, and grateful <laughs> beyond measure. That, uh, that did not come to fruition. So, um, there was that. Now, the odd thing is, um, with Harris being put in as uh, the first female, black, and South, uh, South Asian um, VP, um, I, 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 I got really emotional with that. And the reason is, is uh, the, the main thing of her being a woman in the VP position gives me hope for my daughter. 
Um, if she so chooses eventually to go into politics, the, the way, at least up to the, the, the VP slot, has now been paved. It, her running for a VP slot is no longer, um, you know, a norm breaker. Um, that'll be just a thing of like, oh, okay, so, you know, fine, woman for VP. But my suspicion is, is by the time she's eligible to run, um, we'll have already had a, a, a female president. We'll probably have had somebody from the LGBTQ community um, be in that slot. I think at that point, by the time she's, if she go, if she goes into politics, I'm not going to push her that direction. But if she does, um, I suspect by the time she gets all the way up to wherever she wants to be, um, every person from every possible point have, will have occupied it, because I think that's the way this country is ultimately going to go, and I think that's the ultimate way that the country moves forward as as uh, as a thing you know and I'm, I'm thankful for that so i'm really thankful to her for paving the way ultimately for my daughter or you know all the other daughters who are out there um and i think also you know because trans women are women i think that she paved the way for them too so i'm happy to see that 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 we're getting there, you know, we're getting to a point where being yourself is no longer weird and outlandish. Um, I'm happy to see that. I'm also happy to see the fact that a lot of things that were really putting us at odds with the world have already started to be undone, and I'm happy for that. Uh, do I think mistakes will probably be made during the, the Biden presidency? Eh, probably. We're all human. We all make mistakes. But I think that the ultimate um, outcome and the ultimate driving force is going to be the force for good. I think it's going to be a case of it will be any mistake that is made is going to be made with the best of intent. Um, sometimes things are made, you know, policies are put in place, actions are taken that the um, long term ramifications are not quite so clear or not so fully explored. Um, sometimes you, you, you forego that or, or kind of mitigate that because the immediate payoff is, um, more fortuitous and more advantageous. So, uh, I, but I do think that ultimately this is, this is going to be a good thing. Um, so that, that's where I'm at. Uh, I think it's actually kind of funny that, um, uh, I tried to explain this to the child and I were, Sasha, if you're watching this, I tried to explain this to you and you just kind of looked at me and went, oh, <laughs> so I, I think that, uh, at, at, at your age, you're not quite fully grasping the, the, the gravity of the, of the day, of the situation, but that's fine. You're a child, you're young, you're, you got plenty of years left in you to figure it all out and figure out what this means to you. Um, I'm, I'm, again, I'm just, uh, I'm happy, but it's also a case of there are people out there who wish harm. And they're still out there. And my concern is what might be next from them. Because we've already seen what they're capable of. But I think ultimately, the fact that we now have somebody who actually cares about us as a whole. And not a segment. I think it's going to really pay off. I think it's going to be good for everybody. Um, especially when you say, hey, you know... We're all doing good, not, well, you know, if you discount the blue states, you know, we're doing fine, you know, or, you know, we'd be doing fine if it wasn't for this whole group of people. Listen, we need to figure out a way to reconcile. We need to figure it all out because at some point 
we're all going to have to rely on each other. And especially with the whole disease going on, I don't know about you, but I am done with. I am so exhausted by having to keep distances and masks and whole nine. You know, I want to get the shot in the arm. I want to get back to normal. I want to get back to the table because I, I'm at this point, it will have been a full year since my last convention. Literally had uh, the last convention, uh, Captain Con last year was February 9th, I think. That was that was my only convention that year. 2020 sucked. And I want 2021 to be better. I think this is our first step to getting back to normal. And our first step for those of us who still have anxiety about going to the game table, I think this is going to be our first step in getting back. Um, I also think that this is going to be a, a first step towards people who have, you know, in, in personal life, you know, mine, yours, or otherwise, who have been driven apart by the distances, by the mental fatigue, the mental stress, the physical stress, the emotional stress. All the friends who have been driven apart, I think this is our opportunity to find a time to, to reflect, to reconcile, and, you know, either patch the bridge or make peace with the fact that the bridge is permanently broken. Um, for me, I'm planning to reconcile the bridge. I would like to rebuild them. Uh, for some, there, you know, there, there is no reconciliation, and I understand that. Um, there are some bridges where it's a case of the choices that they made um, put them at odds with my own um, my own creeds, and I cannot reconcile that. Um, but for others, I think there is an opportunity for, um, for apology, for making things better and trying again. And I'm hoping that those things will happen. Um, but that's, that's a two-way street. You know, just because I would like to see it happen doesn't mean that, uh, that others will. And I'm sure that you guys out there can, uh, can relate. So, I think I've rambled enough. And, um, I guess that'll be it. So thanks guys for stopping in. And, uh, we'll catch you later. Dave out.